Right, we'll be lowering the lights so you'll be able to see the next presentation a little bit better, but sorry if it gets a little bit dimmer. Um, thank you, Brian, for introducing the global scale of participatory budgeting. Our next guests will bring that scope down to the size of a single city so that we can see the depth therein. And, but it's more than that. Becky Skurlock and Jess Swanich didn't just bring participatory budgeting to the Pacific Northwest, but they brought it to the youth. Youth Voice, Youth Choice is the name of the Seattle Youth PB process. In Becky's time on the Youth Commission, she oversaw the design and implementation of projects addressing youth, health, youth houselessness. She also started and led Youth Powerhouse, a social action organization by and for the youth. Jess, too, while serving on the commission, helped implement projects using a participatory budgeting process. He also served on Seattle's education and participatory budgeting committees and helped consult school districts, Department of Equity and Racial Relations. He would go on to consult the PB process for adults as well, because that's really what youth participatory budgeting represents. It's the youth around the United States that are modeling PB processes and making it possible for adults. So I want to welcome and thank Jess and Becky. Thank you very much, Olive, for the introduction. That was very nice. And Brian, it was fascinating to hear um, kind of the history of participatory budgeting. Um, and thank you all for being here. We're really excited to talk about our experience working with uh, participatory budgeting um, on the level of Seattle and specifically focused on youth. So Jess and I um, are also um, former co-chairs of the Seattle Youth Commission. And this is essentially an official city commission in which um, 15 youth were chosen from across the city to represent the voices and the experiences of um, the youth in our districts. So we worked on projects such as houselessness and um, improving the quality of our schools um, that were important to youth in conjunction with the city council. And um, all of already introduced us, but uh, I am on a gap year before the University of Chicago. Um, I'm interested in political science and economics. Um, and Jess uh, is a sophomore at Seattle University, currently double majoring in public affairs and political science. So a little bit about um, the Youth Voice, Youth Choice program. It was launched um, in, by the Department of Neighborhoods in July 2015, and essentially it aimed to engage students um, ages 11 to 25, so a pretty broad range, to decide how to, to spend $700,000 of the city's budget. Um, now this kind of seems like a very small amount for, um, in the context of the city as a whole, but um, on the context of what projects youth are interested and in and what they um, want to do, this can actually have a big impact. So um, it was the second participatory budgeting program ever that was um, totally dedicated to youth after Boston. And we, um, Jess and I, were the two youth delegates on the steering committee. So it was 20 people total, but we were the young people that were kind of providing the youth perspective and how the program um, was developed. So kind of going into the models that were kind of influenced um, in Seattle, we looked at Boston um, as a representative model. So the Mayor's Youth Council allocated $1 million um, for the public to appropriate funds for the different projects. So in 2013, it started as Youth Lead the Change. And I think that was very important for us in Seattle to kind of have that youth-focused um, initiative with participatory budgeting. Um, as in the model, youth lead the change. In Seattle, when we first started, we were youth voice, youth choice, um, and now there's a different name as your voice, your choice, to make it more inclusive for the different communities and um, people in Seattle. So with that kind of change, it also came to pop-up discussions in public spaces. So what that kind of looked like was having um, open discussions in different market squares, kind of bringing it back to the whole town hall model um, that Boston is very known for back in the 1790s, and also kind of bringing it to schools and different 
types of areas to kind of allow for more youth participation. What does it mean to be more engaged with the youth in your community and what does it mean to take an active step in kind of going into the communities to make sure that everyone is participating? So with that, over 2,000 Bostonian youth, ages 12 to 25, um, took a stance in kind of representing what they wanted um, for Boston to kind of use the money to appropriate funds for in terms of the different projects that um, would help the Boston youth. So now we're looking at Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix implemented the process with high school students, and I think that's very important considering that um, high school students right now are kind of like the gateway into going into college. And once you're in college, you have a lot of um, time to kind of, you know, sit and settle on a major and the focus that you want to go in terms of a pathway for your career. Um, so with that, many high school students within the Phoenix uh, high schools judge the different projects on their feasibility and necessity. So what does that mean in looking at sustainable projects that can be um, improved on and kind of sustained over time? What does it mean for the students that are voting on the projects right now and those that will be kind of carrying that on um, as they continue towards the future? So that was something that was very important. Also considering the fact that education and representation are big key factors when considering participatory budgeting um, from the youth perspective. Uh, also understanding that with representation, there are different communities, such as people of color, students with disabilities, and also those from different religious faiths. How are they being actively represented within a model that has historically been um, not kind of given that platform for them to give a voice? So understanding education and representation as a way and as a power for them to kind of go out into their communities and say what's on their mind to improve their own communities. So for Seattle's process, um, it went through much the same process as any participatory budgeting program. Um, first, we had community members brainstorm ideas for potential projects. And this was actually open to anyone of any age. They could submit ideas through an online form. Um, we also had uh, paper forms that we passed out um, and then collected. And then we had a committee of 20 youth budget delegates. And these students were between the ages of 11 and 25. And they took all of these um, ideas, read through all of them, and turned them into 19 concrete uh, project proposals with only the assistance of one or two adult leaders. Um, and this was a big project because they had to kind of take a very disparate um, collection of ideas of what citizens wanted um, in their communities and then turn them into um, proposals that were within the budget um, that could actually be implemented. Um, from there, there was the vote, and we actually, Jess and I both uh, worked on setting up voting booths in our schools and our communities, and we invited young people, ages 11, 25, to vote on which projects they most wanted to see in their communities. And this narrowed it down to seven projects that were finally imp implemented. And um, then the city and city staff worked to carry out the projects. So kind of going into our role, this was the poster that we kind of spread out within our schools. Um, so we helped plan the project like from its inception all the way to kind of going out there and actively taking part and trying to reel people in to actually have a voice um, within this sort of process. So like Becky mentioned, we set up voting booths. And with that, it was a different and uh, sustainable process in the fact that we had paper forms at the time. So the way that we would do it was we would go to um, one of our classrooms and tell students about this way to be more engaged within uh, the process of government within Seattle. So understanding that usually, like in terms of government processes, you have to be 18 to vote. Um, but we kind of spun it in this way to say that if you are between the ages of 11 and 25, you have a voice within this process. You are able to take the money that has been allocated to us and make it go towards projects that would mean a lot to your community. So with that, we tallied all the votes and we brought it back to the steering committee. And with that, we kind of broke down what were the necessary priorities for them and what were they looking for out of us. Because um, I feel like in terms of participatory budgeting, 
you have to understand the participants, and you also have to understand the budget. So understanding the different parameters that are set um, in terms of youth, um, considering that we have really wild and crazy ideas, but also understanding what wild and crazy ideas can actually take us far, and what can we actually do with those ideas to kind of make a change and say, hey, we're youth, this is what we want from our government, and this is the participation that we seek from this sort of process. So the winning projects um, ended up being a pretty cool assortment um, of uh, priorities, and we actually saw um, that one of the biggest issues that youth wanted to focus on um, is homelessness, especially, um, or houselessness, especially among the youth population. So uh, there was one program that was implemented to involve youth in building 10 um, small mobile homes. There was also um, youth uh, homeless shelter improvements project um, that went into um, improving the facilities of local um, shelters. There were job readiness workshops that we were able to fund and um, also a program in schools that uh, would enable staff to better um, reach out to homeless youth and connect them with um, the resources in the local community they might not otherwise have access to. And um, so those were the four primary projects. There were also um, several projects throughout the community, including uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot checkout, um, which is a program that was already uh, at the, our local libraries, but um, youth recognized the importance of this, the importance of having internet access um, for doing homework, for connecting with um, friends, for pretty much everything in, in the modern era. So um, we, uh, they d voted to expand that program. Um, there were also uh, park bathroom upgrades that youth wanted to see, and um, they wanted to repaint the crosswalks um, to make sure that um, there were safe uh, routes to access their schools. And in total, this came to $700,000. I believe there was a $250,000 limit on any one individual project. So looking at the whole process of when it started to actually carrying it out, we looked at what worked. So these are the three things that really stood out for us, the budget delegates, the strong voter turnout, and civic engagement. So having the budget delegates, um, as I mentioned earlier, it was really good for us to have um, budget delegates in order to understand the feasibility of the projects at hand. Um, like I said, with the wild ideas, um, there were some things that were really cool and stood out from the rest, um, but of course we kind of had to kind of be grounded in our idea and approach of what can be um, actually approved and what can actually have an impact on the communities in Seattle. Also the strong voter turnout, um, considering the fact that um, once you turn 18 you have to vote, but having participatory budgeting um, to be more involved with youth from ages 11 to 25 at the time, that was very important. Um, that really gave like a stepping stone for those who are very, um, I guess you could say politically active um, as youth and what that meant for them to kind of have a platform and kind of engaging their ideas with different council members and different community organizers within uh, the different neighborhoods and what that looked like moving forward. Also civic engagement. So it wasn't only focused primarily in the schools, but we reached out to community centers and different community organizations. So kind of having it all intertwined and what it means to have a relationship with everybody um, where you meet. Um, especially it's really good for networking in terms of uh, who can like have a foot in the door and who can have a say in what you need to get in order to kind of have your ideas and opinions heard. And that's really important for youth because at times, there are times where youth are kind of um, put aside in terms of not being realistic with their approaches, but we have a lot of dreams, we have a lot of goals, and participatory budgeting is a way for us to have a platform and communicate that to the general public. So... There were several quotes after the process that we got from youth that I think really demonstrate um, the importance and the impact of a youth approach to participatory budgeting. Um, one youth wrote, it's an excellent opportunity for youth my age to really start making a difference in our city's community. Because a lot of youth really do care about getting engaged in their community. They want to know how they can start making a difference now rather than waiting um, until they grow up, until they're old enough to vote. 
um, they want to start now, and this is an avenue uh, for them to get engaged. I feel great to get the chance to vote and be involved in the community. It makes me feel like my vote matters. So once again, where most youth um, who participated in this process had never voted in an actual um, city election or federal election. And to be able to make real decisions um, about how the city uses its resources demonstrates to youth that they can be engaged now. They can, um, the city does care about what they think, uh, even though they're not 18 yet, and it does care about meeting their needs. I wish these empowering social justice projects were more widely discussed within the Seattle City Council and in state policies. And to me, this quote really shows that youth are thinking already on the broader level. Um, they're thinking about how these projects and these ideas that they have can be implemented, um, not just on the uh, level of the participatory budgeting program, but also in the broader city and the state. Um, as Brian was talking about the bathroom upgrades in public schools, that's just one example of a small project that started um, with um, an idea from youth and then expanded into a broader um, city initiative that addressed a real need that hadn't been recognized before. So that is another really important aspect of the process. So kind of going into the lessons learned, um, we looked at the four things that stood out for us again, and where can we improve? Um, so one of them is being planning and engagement. Um, from the start, we really had, um, it was just me and Becky as the youth uh, representatives. And what does that mean to have, you know, communities that aren't being listened to? Uh, engaging with those communities. What does it mean to go out into the community and actually like advocate for them rather than doing what you think is best. So understanding the two different modes of representation. There's a trustee model and there's a delegate model. So with that trustee model, uh, you are kind of doing what you think is best for the community. And with a delegate model, you are actually going to the community, getting feedback, hearing from the voices that aren't being historically listened to. So understanding a good balance of between uh, what does it mean to be a trustee and what does it mean to be a delegate and understanding those two models in terms of engaging with the community. Uh, with communication, updates and progress, um, that was a big thing moving forward. I think by the time that the projects got approved, uh, there wasn't much um, communication afterwards in terms of what youth can do uh, to kind of support these projects. Um, in addition, it's also important to have everyone's voices heard. So what does it mean to have these types of meetings but not having the right people show up? So in that kind of case, looking at uh, participation, like having meetings in the evening. Is that being accessible for those uh, parents that really want to get involved and want to learn more about what is actually being done in the community? Or is it only affecting those whose voices have already been heard? Uh, feasibility, looking at the bigger picture. What does it mean to actually carry out a project that you think will be sustainable over time? And what does that mean for the future of children like moving forward? Can it be done by youth uh, in the next year? in the next five years, in the next 10 years. Understanding those types of parameters that are being set and how you can kind of push the boundaries but stay in the boundaries at the same time. Uh, accessibility. Uh, looking at the different communities that haven't been historically represented, uh, like I mentioned earlier, people of color, people with disabilities, and people of different religious faiths, how are they being accurately represented and how are they being accurately heard? Um, in terms of being efficient, in terms of being effective. How can we engage with them without being uh, different types of mirrors in terms of what they want out of the community? Are we kind of prioritizing our own voices over theirs, or are we taking an active effort to make sure that everyone's voice is being listened to? So that's one of the things that we would like to improve on moving forward in terms of actively engaging with the youth and different communities moving forward. So in the future, um, the program has been renamed to Your Voice, Your Choice, and we'll hear um, from the next speaker about that. 
Um, and now it's expanded to all of the city. Um, and it has more of a focus on um, the parks and streets and uh, improvements that need to be made. But young people are still involved. The Seattle Youth Commission is still involved in getting youth um, engaged in this process and in um, involving their ideas uh, in creating the projects that are funded by the Your Voice, Your Choice program. And so I hope uh, what you take away from this presentation is that um, young people are the leaders of today. We're not just the leaders of tomorrow. And by engaging in a participatory budgeting project with youth, um, the cities are giving youth the opportunity to step up to really participate um, and become lifelong um, leaders in civic engagement. So thank you very much.